Hello and welcome. My name is Zach Robinson. You may also know me as Zero Empires. And I am Eric Robel, lead of the balance team. We have a very exciting match for you guys today. We have Frank playing as the blue Bruce in the north. And down to the south in the red, we have Mark, and he's playing as the Holy Roman Empire. This is a one versus one show match here on the Arabia map, and uh, we're super excited to share some awesome gameplay with you all today. So Frank playing as the Roos to the north, the Roos as a civilization, they are master hunters. They're also very good with cavalry. They get access to the early knight, which they can make in the feudal age, as well as the mounted warrior monk and the horse archer. And uh, already you can see he's built his unique building, the hunting cabin here next to the wood line. And he's trained an early scout to go out across the map and take advantage of his bounty system. This is another system unique to the Rus, where they get gold for killing Gaia. And with that gold, they build up bounty points. The more points they get, the more prizes they get, Eric. <laughs> oh, I love prizes. <laughs> what do they get, Johnny? They get, they get more villager gather rate for food. And uh, their hunting cabins generate gold faster as well. So this is a really um, awesome start for Frank getting out here, killing the deer. Tell us a bit about the Holy Roman Empire. Love it. So their focuses are on religion and defenses. So a lot of times as this civilization, they will want to get some extra gold. So they're able to take advantage of that really early in the game. So you see he's sent four guys out there to get gold mine, whereas on the roof side, there's actually, he hasn't even built the mine, right? So he's just, yeah, he's just running around collecting pellets, getting cash. And then down here, you can see he's invested in the wheelbarrow really early at the mill. So he wanted that so badly. He hasn't even put the mill next to berries or anything. He just threw it out the berries there. berries over here. Yeah. He's like, whatever. Just Shortest walk walking distance possible. I just went that wheelbarrow. So he's getting that. He'll reduce the, the travel time of his villagers. They'll spend more time working and less time slacking off, right? Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is the prelate. So no other civ can build a religious unit from their town center, um, but the HRE, uh, that's sort of the cool special thing, is for 100 gold, they can build this unit. And you see, first he produced uh, a couple of workers because it buffs every single worker you have, and it can buff up to 10. So you see, yeah, he's got nine there, so he wanted to make sure he had built a whole bunch. And now it's out, and it'll buff all, all nine of those guys, and it gives them 40% yeah. extra gather rate. Ooh. This is really powerful. Yeah, it's very strong. And on top of that, the, Ru the Holy Roman Empire, as a civ bonus, they get to carry 40% more resources as well. So buffing yeah. those villages under the town center, get that sheep meat, and uh, that will really help his early economy. On the other side, we have Frank, and uh, he's also doing wheelbarrow, coming in a little bit later though. And uh, for him, he's focused at the moment on just killing the Gaia around the map. He's already working on uh, killing some deer. He's also going after a wolf, and uh, that will actually give him more bounty as well. A deer is 10, but a wolf will give him 25. He's already built that up to 300. Wow. So he's already getting busy. 10% faster <laughs> food harvest rate. In his wood line now, he's actually adding a wooden fortress. This is another unique roost building, and this uh, is not only a great defensive structure, but it also buffs nearby uh, lumber camps within the influence, and that will cause the villagers to drop in villagers dropping off wood there will drop 20% more. So both of these players really focused on the early game and getting their economies rolling and pumping as much as they can. And now they're sort of transitioning to the next phase, which is building their landmark so that they can enter the feudal age. So we've got Mark here going for the Aachen Chapel. And this is really nice because instead of just being able to inspire 10 villagers, uh, once it's completed, the prelate can hop in there and then everything in this radius around it will be inspired. So you're able to buff a lot more than 10, and you see he's kind of built it here next to the, the, the trees so he can maximize the amount of lumber that he's chopping, and later on it can be really good. You can add some farms in there once the trees are down. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, we've got <laughs> Frank coming in here uh -oh. with a couple of scouts. He's uh, killed all the guy here, and now he's looking for some villages or mining camps. Um, he's uh, not 
really able to kill villagers very easily in the early game, but uh, he can certainly push them away because if Mark stays there for too long, those villagers will go down. So running back to the safety of the town center for now. Meanwhile, on the other side, he's going up to the feudal age as well, and he's building the Golden Gate. This is a special market which always allows you to trade at a favorable rate every single minute. You'll gain a new supply and you'll be able to spend these on trading for a profit every single time. Wow, four scouts there. That is aggressive. Burning, burning down the mining camp. No gold for you, Mark. Yeah, the having four scouts is actually quite nice. A, you know, you can you can see everything on the map really quickly. Yeah. Their torch damage is not bad, right? And then lastly, um, you know, later later in the game, there's utility of being able to pick up corpses. Oh, 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 oh wow. Emergency Great repairs. use of emergency repairs. So this is a special HRE ability, which they can activate on anything that's within the influence of their town center. So you see it generates an influence. So you can actually build more town centers later in the game, you know, like in the middle of the map, and, yeah. you know, build a keep there or something like that to defend it. Um, but it will repair the building up uh, really quickly for you and for free as well. So you don't have to waste your wood from your villagers to repair it, and you don't have to waste their resource gathering time. You can have them off gathering resources for you while the emergency repairs is active. But you can only have one at a time, and then it has a cooldown. So yeah. the enemy, maybe Choose they, wisely. yeah, they can yeah. distract you. They can attack a house, get you to use it, and then kill the keep or something. Right, and now. Frank <laughs> couldn't burn down the, the mining camp, so he's going to steal your deer instead. Uh oh, uh oh, the great heist. Four oh, yeah. scouts, there they go. So the defensive spearmen will push them away, but they're going to get away with a little treat. They're pretty happy <laughs> they're very with happy their prize. With that. <laughs> so uh, that's the professional scouts tech, and uh, this allows your scouts to um, actually carry the carcasses. Uh, both players already have this at the moment, um, but you can see already that uh, Frank's stealing away four of those deer, and Mark is gra grabbing some deer as well. He wants to bring them home, and he wants to specifically bring them in the range of this Arkham Chapel, because villagers gather from deer very quickly, and if they can do so under the safety of the town center with a 40% gather rate bonus, oh, he's just yeah, stacking that's those strong. bonuses that's together. So strong, yeah. yeah. Really so good. This, yeah, this matchup in general, these two sieves, yeah. um, they both sort of have some benefit to getting the deer where it's, you know, either they have a bunch of scouts, so they might as well ferry the deer, or they are getting a lot more food from the deer. There's a lot of tension between these two sieves in this matchup of trying to get those deer. <laughs> Look at that, he's got six. He's going all out. He's just, he's just picked them all up, right? Absolutely. <laughs> just... So both these players so far then, uh, we've got some military buildings coming down. We've got the archery range and the stable from uh, Frank. That's a pretty popular combo, right? Archers and cavalry. You've got maneuverability on the side of the cav. You've got the range on the side of the archers. And even a blacksmith in the back here to improve his archer damage with the steeled arrow. On the other side, uh, Mark, he has... Oh, he's building out to the right. He's already got two stables and he's going for a barracks so he's double going for barracks double early stables. spearmen uh, here as well so yeah it's going to be archers and, and <laughs> horsemen against horsemen and spears this is this is game is going to get aggressive it looks like that's a lot of production early so you can see he's really took took advantage of all that early wood that he was able to chap because he had the chapel yeah. chapel in his area and so he went more for like a raw raw out military production and he's uh, a bit slower to be getting the upgrades but since he's gonna have so many units the upgrades will be super powerful when he gets them but it looks like he's trying to start an early push here huh yeah he's trying to hunt down the scouts with his spears but he's having a hard time catching them and of course that's the advantage of cavalry right you have the movement speed although mark will catch the, the oh. horseman here and these spearmen do plus 16 against cavalry so that's triple damage very, very high damage against cavalry units. The scouts are really just trying to steal the deer, but now he's got some horsemen, he might be able to chase them down and uh, prevent any more deer from being stolen away. Uh, on the other side, we've also got some horsemen here from Mark. Looks like he wants to try and raid, but before doing that, he wants to bring them back and just try and catch out the scouts, really, and uh, stop them from stealing any more of his deer. Oh, he still can. he got one. Nice. Oh, oh, I think he's gonna get some more. I think they've he's met get their some end. More. Oof. There's so two close. left. <laughs> they just drop the corpse right where they right where they die. So he he may send his scout over there and try to pick them up himself, right? 
Yeah, and uh, of course, the more food oh. you can secure, the better. He chased down and killed one more scout. There were six to begin with, and I think only one made it out alive, so... Now the archers are coming in. Archers are going to be absolutely taking care of these spearmen here, and uh, the horsemen from Mark coming in as well. Quite a lot of micro at the moment, as uh, both players trying to jostle for, for position, trying to get the spearmen onto the cav and the uh, horsemen onto the archers. Yeah, we have a very hard counter unit system in our game, so... The horsemen are doing double damage to the archers, so you want to get your horsemen onto the archers as much as possible. But the spearmen are doing triple damage to the horses, so you want to try to run the horses away from the spearmen yeah. and towards the archers. So there's a lot of sort of back and forth dancing in the game, which is very cool to see. Yeah, there's a lot of back and forth micro, and it looks like Frank's been pushed all the way back home. Mark, with the, the additional military production buildings, we saw two stables and two barracks mm -hmm. here against basically two stables and a range. He's just overwhelmed Frank. And uh, Frank's now pushed back to his town center, but at this stage of the game, it can be quite hard to push in. He has got the wooden fortress. He's also got 20 villages in the town center. That's a lot of firepower. Yeah, he's taking uh, quick care of those units that are pushing a bit too close, and he can push back now uh, with his defender's advantage. So things are already getting pretty scrappy. This is as... a spicy game. Wow. We're seeing a second town center from Frank now. That's a uh, bold play, considering how badly he's getting pushed right now, huh? Exactly. Instead of investing into more military, he's going for the economic route, and uh, we'll see if Mark can punish this. But in Age of Empires 4, you can add a town center in the second age. So he's really investing in this. It's very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see if it pays off for Frank and if he can hold against the onslaught of Mark here. Yeah, having having spending 700 resources this soon is, is quite a lot, right? That's almost 10 less units. Um, and you can see already, you know, he doesn't quite have the units to defend this hunting cabin, which is generating some some free gold for him. So he's trying to push it off, but I think Mark has a pretty big army and he's going to be able to push it up. Yep, now he's coming in with the spearmen and those cavalry have to retreat. They're not going to be able to fight the spearmen. So now he's able to burn down the hunting cabin. Yeah, hunting cabin goes down. And uh, as the roost, if you have great map control, you can put these hunting cabins all over the place and generate a lot of free mm -hmm, gold. But mm -hmm. if you're in Frank's position like this, it's not really so feasible. Uh, otherwise, you're just sort of throwing them away as your opponent scouts them and takes them out. Over here, though, look at this. We've got a boar kill Ooh. from Mark. He's very confident in his position right now. He's got great map control. He's pushing right up to Frank's base. So he's taking the opportunity to kill a boar out here. And uh, that's the fastest source of food in the game for him. So he'll and be getting a lot of 2,000 of it too, right? Oh, yeah. A lot so of food right there. It's risky. The boar is is pretty dangerous, right? Like, you, we, we should probably warn the age 2 players if they're trying to get boar in this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, they're a lot tougher than you might be used to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're really worth it, right? 2,000 yeah, food. Totally. Very fast gather rate. Um, but the risk is there as well. The fact that you're out in the middle of the map, it is dangerous. But for Mark, you know, a good offense is the best defense sometimes. Time. So he's out here and uh, taking the fight to Frank right now. Yeah, and he's got a, a nice mix of spearmen and cavalry so he can defeat the enemy cavalry and also run around and raid. Which oh! Is... oh! <laughs> okay. Goodbye. What happened there? Frank, uh, he's trying to go up to age three. He's going for a fast age three. I think he got a bit uh, uh, optimistic. Yeah, maybe, with yeah, this a placement. little bit. He's going to rebuild it in the back by the looks of things. This is the Abbey of the Trinity, and this is the age three landmark now. Uh, this allows him to make his unique warrior monk and uh, they also have some special upgrades in there as well and the monks are half priced. So the warrior monk, it's a uh, mounted monk basically. It's uh, very fast. It's also got a buff ability which will buff nearby units when it attacks uh, and give them armor and attack. So we might see that in use but I think Frank will probably want to grab some relics here quite quickly. Yeah, their extra move speed is primo picking up those relics and denying the other player from getting them. And it looks like he's also trying to harass and take out some of these production facilities. Um, so I'm wondering what his response will be because he knows he knows that the landmark is coming down because he saw it get destroyed right in front of his <laughs> eyes. So basically he has to choose, does he want to commit to a really big attack or does he want to try to tech himself and sort of catch up? Um, well, knowing Mark, he's probably just going to attack, attack, attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's very aggressive, yeah. but there's some really good defense, defense right? Because yeah. he's got the, the wooden fortress that has eight garrison slots yeah. instead of uh, the normal tower only has five. And 
The way the garrison mechanic works in our game is that every unit garrison gives you one extra arrow. So if you put eight guys in there, that means you're firing eight extra arrows. So it really ramps up the damage of these defenses if you're able to, to yeah. put, pop some guys in there. Of course, it comes at the cost of maybe idling your villagers, but it's worth it if it keeps you in the game. And Frank <laughs> okay. can afford to idle some villas. He added a second town center. Absolutely. But yeah, now he's in the castle age. He's going to be training that first warrior monk, and it looks like he's going to be going out to try and grab some relics. I like this. I want to call attention to this. Frank mm -hmm. has a couple of scouts out on the map, and they are chilling in the stealth forest so the, the stealth forest mechanic you can hide units in there and your opponents can't necessarily see in but you can see out so it gives you a lot of uh, vision on the map and uh, also allows you to potentially spring some ambushes as well yeah and the scout is the perfect unit in there because normal units don't have a big line of sight but the yeah. scout in there can see a lot of stuff and nothing can see it so they don't even know that they that you can see them right so yeah, yeah great for ambushes and it looks like, uh, so we've got to the third age here for Frank, and it looks like he's built some of his uh, unique units here. Yeah, this is the Horse Archer. Again, another mounted unit unique to the roofs. And uh, this one is uh, pretty strong because it's uh, got the mobility, of course, and the archer is sort of lacking that mobility. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also uh, kind of weak against other ranged units. So at the moment, that's great for him because Mark doesn't have any ranged units. It's all uh, horsemen and uh, hardened spearmen at the moment. So it's a pretty good unit to use at this stage of the game. But Frank lacking a lot of units at the moment. He seems to be vastly outnumbered, maybe looking to potentially counterattack with some raids here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Great, great choice of unit um, because you're sort of, while you're getting the mobility, you're sort of paying for that because it's more expensive than an archer and its it hit points are not very high, especially considering how expensive it is resource-wise. Um, so you kind of really need to get some, get some value out of that because in a straight-up fight, um, archers would be more powerful. So that's why he just goes immediately for the raid. And this is great from Mark. He's already uh, catching some villagers out, and Frank's probably feeling quite constricted at the moment as these cavalry keep chasing him down whenever he leaves his it. He's getting attacked on oh. the north and the south and the middle right now. It, it's, it's, it's all happening. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But Mark is going to get raided on the other side. You can see the horse archers coming in now. And wow, just look at that beautiful farming economy. I love it. He's losing villagers though on the gold and uh, Frank there, I don't think Mark's even realized. I don't think he's expecting them to be raided on the He's like, position. I'm attacking you yeah. in four spots. You can't be attacking me also. Yeah, the minimap is chaos right now. It's stuff <laughs> happening everywhere. Look at this. More he ran back died. in, yep. Over in the side. This is a real scrappy game. And of course the pressure came in so early. It's very difficult for either player to get any walls up or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it looks like Mark is really committed to this feudal age, but he's decided now is the time to go to age three with the Burgrave Palace. And the Burgrave is a great choice in this situation because he knows his opponent has already gone for the Abbey Trinity, already has the warrior monks out, and is able to quickly go onto the map and take the relics. So his other choice, landmark choice, is holding relics and getting a big bonus for them, but there aren't going to be any relics by the time he gets there. There's none left. Yeah, they're all going to be gone. Yeah. They've gotten eaten up. Um, so since he knows what he's playing against when he's up against, he's decided to go for the Burgrave Palace, um, which is instead of like an overtime economic building, it's more of a, uh, a power spike where you get five barracks effectively yeah. at the same time. So you can really put the pressure to the enemy once you complete this. Yeah, and the HRE are a infantry civilization. They have uh, the unique Lansknecht, which is a castle age unit. We might see that on the field. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit more detail when we do. But uh, yeah, it looks like Frank has managed to push uh, Mark away for now uh, as he goes up to the next age. And uh, he's really going hard on these, uh, these towers here. He's actually upgraded this one with the Springald, which is an emplacement, which essentially you can upgrade on each individual fortress. It equipped a really high damage Springold, uh, and that's a single target, high damage, defensive um, emplacement, essentially. It does a lot of damage to raiding units, especially uh, those with high health. Yeah, that's one of the unique things about the Wooden Fortress, is they can just get all the upgrades, right? Like, normally you gotta kind of choose at the other outposts, but the, that's the cool Wooden Fortress special power, is get them. Yeah, we've got a raid coming in here, and the Burgrave Palace is up. So we'll see if uh, Mark's going to be putting that to good use soon. He's got he's got a lot of food. So. Oh yeah, he's putting a lot. 
<laughs> He'll be putting all his production facilities to work. I think he was kind of he was kind of stepping off a little bit and waiting because he knew he was going to get age three soon. He could get some upgrades in on his units and he'd be a lot better at taking fights and even just raiding, right? Because yeah. all your veteran horsemen are going to have more health and more damage. So they're just going to be much better at fighting villagers. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, it looks like he's getting ready to take the fight back to Frank. He's continuing to raid, but, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> Frank's getting another warrior monk here, and, uh, oh, uh -oh conversion. conversion! Oh, he's gonna try oh it. no, run away, run away! <laughs> oh. Wow, there you go. So, conversion in Age of Empires 4, it's, uh, it's a little bit different. Yeah, um, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> as you can see, the, the big blue circle, uh, anything in there at the end of the timer will be converted, so you get some time to react but uh, Mark there managed to get his units out of the way before the conversion came in, and uh, Frank was able to zone them out. It's, yeah. it's a great zoning tool. Yeah, especially when the enemy is in your base killing your workers, and yeah. you pop that down, he has to decide, does he want to kill some more of your workers, or does he want to save his, his army, right? So right. he picked save his army. I think that was a good choice. <laughs> Absolutely. It can be quite a big swing, but uh, players do have plenty of time to react as well. So we'll see now. I mean, Mark is posted up right outside of Frank's base. He's got the veteran archers out here, but he doesn't have many, and that's a lot of horsemen. So I don't think he's going to want to take this fight. I think he wants to probably get back, to be honest. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, he's kind of overstayed oh, his welcome here, it looks he's like. He's surrounded as well. Oh, no. Frank is losing a lot of archers here. Oh, yikes. He's going to be very careful as he fights back, but ouch. He, he's made really good use. This wooden fortress has really paid for itself, yeah. though, right? And he's got a sprinkled in that one, too, right? Yeah, as soon as he comes back towards this defensive line, it gets very difficult for Mark to push in. And Frank as well, and he's done a great job of collecting the relics. Because the warrior monk is on a horse, he mm -hmm. does move that much faster. He's already got three relics inside of the Abbey of Trinity. He's got another one inside of the monastery. And now in the south, he's even <laughs> capturing the sacred site. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about the sacred victory. Yeah, so this is kind of a new thing in our game. There's generally three sites, but not necessarily on every map. And each site that you take control of will trickle gold into you. So regardless, it's nice to just have them. And if you have all three of them, that starts the victory timer for sacred sites. And if you can hold them before the timer expires, then you just win the game. So it requires a lot of map control to have all three of them. And once the enemy brings any unit in there, if you're not in there too, then he'll start taking it away from you. Oh, you see that happening now. Mark, he immediately reacted. <laughs> he's like, hey, you're trying to get free gold? I don't think so. Oh yeah, he took away the uh, the monk and then he's decapping the site basically. It's quite difficult to hold all three, but it's a great yeah. victory condition if you've got good map control, which Mark has. So, um, yo, oh, look at that. I see, I see, I see. <gasps> Landsknecht. Uh, Landsknecht, there you go. So the Landsknecht is an awesome unit. Tell us a little bit more about it. So he's got some sort of strengths and weaknesses, uh, which is a really great balance point for the unit. So its weaknesses, it's got uh, pretty low health relative to most of the units, and it's kind of expensive, but his damage is huge. So it's a, how do we, an enormous two-handed sword. Enormous. Enormous. It is huge. <laughs> this is a big sword. <laughs> and it does an AOE damage yeah. when he cleaves and attacks. So not only is he hitting the first target, but he's also hitting all the guys around him. And he's he's pretty quick for an infantry. He's one of the fastest infantry yeah. out there. So he makes a really great raider being the like run in there and kill stuff. Yeah. Um, he does an excellent job against just anything where it kind of bunches up in his tights. So yeah. spearmen in particular, he can just cleave the spearmen down really quickly. And since he's got quite a large cavalry army, that's a really nice combination mixing those two units together. Yeah, and uh, they also get the... Um trying to find his blacksmith. Ah, he's already got it. So uh, mm -hmm. the HRE, he's on it. Yeah, they get a unique tech, which also allows their infantry to move faster as well. So it really sort of uh, compounds with that fast move speed of the Landsknecht. And he's got a really mixed army here. He's got knights, he's got horsemen, he's got spearmen, he's got Landsknecht. So in our game, we really want to encourage players and, and reward players for building mixed army compositions. The counter system is very hard, and if you get caught building just one unit of one type, you can be easily countered. And mm -hmm. so by mixing his army together, he's really kind of covering all bases, and he's doing a great job of that here as he approaches Spearman as well. Yeah, uh, one thing he is missing though is he doesn't have a lot of siege damage. Like, torches torches are decent, you know, but he doesn't have, like, you know, cannons or trebuchets or rams or whatever, so... Um, they, and keeps in particular, it's a big, sturdy stone structure, right? Yeah. So it's not really easy to burn down no. with torches, right? So you can see the extra uh, torch armor on this building, and 
So he started attacking it a couple times and then and then <laughs> kind of gave up, right? He's like, oh, this isn't working out. Yeah, he's diving under here. And there's a lot of archers here from Frank. If he pops them back out of the archery range, he's also repairing on the other side. And the keep here, it's taking a battering, but it's also doing so much damage as well. And oh, wow, what's this? Oh, Frank, Manganel. Manganel's come again, getting a little bit uh, too close for comfort, actually. But I think he might have to give up on killing the keep. He's getting a huge amount of value out of this structure. Yeah, and really just distracting all these infantry while the cavalry run in and, and burn down the Manganels is a lot of value. Like, Manganel is an expensive unit, right? So you really Really got to protect those things. Oh, we got another Manganel here as well. Oh, a counter Manganel! <laughs> wow, Mark is taking so much damage here. If he doesn't get the keep, it, it's really this not worth it. This is going to be a huge loss, yeah. But he might get the keep. Oh, oh no, burning oil. oil, it just finished. Oh, that's the retreat sign. As soon as he wow. saw that, he knew he had to get out. That was pretty clutch. So, boiling oil is researched now, which means that uh, any units that come close to the keep will get burned. We might see the <laughs> action here in just about there. Oh, it is. yep. <laughs> got him again. So it looks like he, he's trying to maybe just siege it down with some mangonels and, and not go in with the, the cavalry anymore, but he's also being attacked by some archers, there's some knights going on, there's a lot of stuff distracting, and he's getting his repairs off, so... I think this keep is going to stand. Oh no, he's going to lose another Manganel! Oh, it's so expensive. Oh, Manganels devastating. are not cheap, and uh, that one's going to go down as well. Meanwhile, he's raiding at the back. Did he close this wall? I think he did. So, the Rus, they don't get stone walls, but they do get fortified palisades. Fortified palisade walls, they only cost wood. They have so much health, though. Beefy. And uh, although you can't put units on top of them like stone walls, they're quite a formidable defense even still. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they actually build a little bit faster than the, the normal wall as well, so you can get them down there pretty quick. So, yeah, they're they're pretty clutch. Wow. Frank, and getting a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, now, he's I been think. attacked he's constantly <laughs> just over and over and over again. I'm getting worn out watching. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Mark is really starting to pile on the siege now, though. Castle Age is really where the siege options start to open up. We've mm -hmm. got a number of Manganels. We've also got a couple of Springolds in here. The Springold is a counter-siege siege unit. Mm -hmm. It does a single target uh, high damage, uh, but it's got a huge bonus against siege, plus 20, and uh, that essentially gives them the extra firepower to deal with any defensive Manganels as well. Yeah, and they have a, a little bit more range, too, so you can kind of stand, stand at the perimeter and pick them off. Um, and they're, they're faster and they set up quicker as well. So, yeah, they're much more mobile, sort of flexible tool. But they're doing single target damage. Manganel does AoE. So you'd prefer to build an army of only Manganels. Um, but you want to mix in those Springolds just in case they have some Manganels of their own. Which we did see, right? Yeah, we saw Manganels from both. And, and Manganels are so good against groups of <gasps> oh, units. No, groups of units like, like those that. villagers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, and, and, the, and the archers as well. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So much. Oh. Devastating. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh, and one more hit on those villagers. Oh, one God. more, and they're, they're all so all low. Die. They're all they're, they're gone. <laughs> they're done for. Wow. Frank here was not expecting so much siege to roll up and start uh, laying waste to his, his base. But meanwhile, he is oh, raiding as oh, well. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So he is responding. Archers and horsemen, knights mixed in as well, getting in there on the farms of Mark. Mark. Losing a few villas and also having to idle a whole heap of his economy. Yeah, he doesn't even have enough garrison slots because the town center holds 20 villagers, but uh, unlike on the other side, there's no wooden fortresses, there's no, because you yeah. can't build them, right? There's no outposts, there's no keep, so he looks like he was not ready for this counter raid. Yeah, and he's wide open. He's not walled himself up. He felt pretty strong. You know, good in his position. He was so he was, so aggressive. Yeah. He's keeping the enemy in the base. He's like, I'm safe. I'm fine. But exactly. yeah, that keep really turned things around, and he didn't set up the defenses. Oh, it really did. Now he's paying the price as uh, gets raided here. He is gonna clean this up though. He's done a good job of responding, and maybe he'll think about getting some of his own walls up soon as the lands connect go to work. Oh look yeah, look at him just cut those cavalry down. <laughs> taking them out. That's I just like nice. watching them work. I love when they charge, when they run and jump. Just and straight just, over. Let's yeah. See, oh, man. <laughs> Frank, though, uh, looks like he's kind of running out of, well, maybe not running out of gold, but struggling to, to lock down the gold on the front of his base. So he's trying to be uh, sneaky out here on the left side. He sent 16 villas out to grab gold That's in the corner of the map. Quite the, quite the army. Oh, well, look at this. The siege. Yeah, it's it really makes, open. Yeah, it makes sense he didn't want to mine gold there by that he thought it was safe having a keep there, right? But there's just too much siege, so he had to back out. 
And now there's what, cavalry versus siege, and the he's got so many springles, he's actually able to clean up that cavalry. Yeah. And now um, pushing in the the mangonels don't do awesome siege damage, um, but they do they they will do a decent a decent punch. So if you can get enough enough hits, they will be able to take things down. It's buildings, and this is just dangerous. I mean, how do you how do you push into this as Frank? Well, you kind of need some of your own siege, or you need a lot of cavalry. Mm -hmm. Six springolds is no joke, and and. He's kind of got no spring odds right now. He's starting to build a couple, but he's really got to hold on. And you can see the strength of that palisade wall there from the roost really just yeah, holding him out. Yeah, taking a beating, right? It's not going to last that long. <laughs> I think Mark's going to find his way right to the front door, trying to avoid those keeps, of course, which are locking down the open area to the right. But there's a lot of cav now, and if he can get in behind, he could blow up this siege uh -oh, quite quickly. Uh-oh, uh-oh, he's coming in for the flank. Oh, here it is. Oh, oh he picked off his... He's going to pick it off. Yep, 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 he's got the torches on it. Nice. Is Mark too deep? Can he get out? <laughs> this looks like a one-way trip, right? Either he's gonna go in and win the game, or he's oh. gonna get his army killed. Yep, and those horsemen are just gonna find their way in there, killing another Springall, but now they're trapped, and uh, the only way is to get out the gate or uh, or face these these horsemen at the front, but there's more from Frank coming in at the top side, and he is doing a good job of starting to pick off these siege units, and Mark maybe getting a little bit trapped in there, does keep a lot of them alive still, but uh, there's another keep behind here, and Frank <laughs> is just throwing down all the keeps to try and defend, defend, defend for the time being. I love, I love this choice of adding more keeps, because he doesn't have any, he doesn't have any trebuchets, he doesn't have any rams, he doesn't have anything that can really punch through them, so just, just throwing a whole bunch of down, slow this attack down and then let your superior economy outproduce. And he's kind of just like throwing waves of horsemen at this, right, to just wear it down and wear it down. And look how many siege weapons are left now, right? There's yeah. three. There's three. And they're really expensive. Um, Mark's invested a lot into this push. And besides breaking a hole in the wall and burning an archery range, That's... I don't think he's done much <laughs> else with this. It's not a lot of, like, he didn't raid yeah. villagers, right? Um, and Absolutely. he's slowly running away with his one last manganel. <laughs> and back home, I mean, he really, um, you know, is wide open. He has added the second town center to the left side, so nice. they're both like making that. sure to keep their economies growing and rolling as much as they can. But for the time being, um, Mark's just gonna have to back off, and Frank has just, again, bought himself some more time, and he's really starting to build up his eco back here, more hunting cabins with farms around them, uh, really building up his food economy, and uh, maybe thinking about the Imperial Age before too long. Yeah, he's got a nice, solid, position with his keeps there in the walls so he knows nothing's gonna get back there so yeah he's adding on tons of more farms and he's also starting to, to saturate those gold in the middle Oh, that's wow, sneaky. that's a great spot for a keep. <laughs> I, mean, I think he suspects that, or he may have scouted even, that, hey, there's some villagers out here, and this keep will just shut that down. Great reaction oh, good from pull, Mark, good pull. though. Pulls them away immediately. And Frank, he's got enough resources to go to the Imperial Age very soon, but for the time being, yeah, building these keeps around the map, thinking about gold control and map control going into mm -hmm. the late game. These big golds, they have 8,000 gold in them, which is twice that of the 4,000 gold from the small mines. And as they run out, players are really forced out towards the edges of the map where it's more risky. Mm -hmm. And Frank is doing a great job of, at the moment, locking that down. I'm looking for this Imperial Age landmark. What's it going to be? Where is it going to be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big base, right? <laughs> oh yeah, it could be anywhere in here. Uh, was it there? Oh, did he just cancel it, I think? I think he moved maybe? it. Uh, there oh, we go. No. There it High is. Armory. So the High Armory, it is a uh, siege landmark. It uh, basically makes siege workshops nearby uh, reduce the cost of siege that's trained from them. Um, and it also has some unique siege techs in there as well. So Frank's really thinking about, right, this game's going late. I want my siege. I want to make sure I've got means to, uh, to destroy my opponent's base when I finally get around to it. <laughs> yeah, and I love that choice on top of the keeps because he's locked down the gold deposits. Siege weapons cost a lot of gold, so he's got a very solid long-term plan, which he's, I think, going to do pretty well with. But there's a pretty big raid coming in here, yeah, actually. Yeah, look at the Lanstanek. They're so good at killing villagers, <laughs> but they die so quickly to right? arrow fire. They're just, they're ultimate glass cannons, really. Yeah, when I said a big raid, I meant, like, in terms of... <laughs> The devastating power yes. of the Lanschneck. <laughs> there was only five, but five of them wiped out a couple, quite a few villagers pretty quickly. And yeah. he was lucky he had those keeps. If those Lanschneck had kind of run into the farming in the very back, he, he could have been in some pretty big trouble there. Yeah. 
So, uh, Mark then, um, is he thinking about the Imperial Age soon? Maybe not. He's a little bit short on food at the moment. Um, we'll see if he's uh, going up anytime soon. But uh, Frank, he's well on his way. And uh, once he's up to Imperial, obviously he'll be going for some big techs. Imperial Age Elite Technologies for him. And then maybe thinking about some, some bigger siege guns, like the Bombard, for example, which mm -hmm, can uh, really mm -hmm. tear through buildings with some gunpowder. And also, potentially even, the other final um, Rus unique unit, which we haven't seen yet, the Streltsy. Yeah, it's a, a very powerful version of the hand cannon, which gets a cost reduction, and um, it also can get more powerful over time as it's standing there. But it looks like he's going to focus on the Bombards, you think? Yeah, going for the uh, unique tech here in the high armory, the fine-tuned guns. It's giving his bombards 25% uh, faster reload time. So that is significant as uh, he'll want to tear through his opponent's base. But look at this on oh, the left-hand side. Well, Mark, he's going to build out four of these rams in the field. And it looks like he wants to launch an assault on this keep here and maybe deny Frank the, uh, the long-term gold out on this left-hand side. Yeah, this is a great spot for an attack because there's also a ton of villagers over there gathering yeah. wood that the keep is protecting them from. And four rams will be more than enough to take it out as long as he's able to get on those villagers and stop them from repairing or torching the rams. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see if you can put that to work. Obviously, Frank just reached the Imperial Age, so he invested a lot of resources into mm -hmm. aging up. Uh, this will be a good time to push, but uh, if Frank can see this coming then he might be able to react in time. At the moment, though, I think he's got no idea about this. He, he's just chilling at home, moving his army out to the opposite side of the map, and, well, trouble is brewing in the fog of war. Yeah, and I like how uh, he he sort of pushed in with those cavalry, too, up sort of the north side of the base to get his make sure the army was kind of far away and not going to be able to respond to these rams. And now... They're coming in. Uh -oh. The ram train is on they're, the way. They're slow, but they're powerful, right? Oh, yeah. He's got boiling oil on this keep, so he doesn't really want to get under there with his uh, military units, but the rams will do a great job, and then he's using the horsemen to chase down the villagers as they run away, and wow, they're getting cut oh, down. Oh, wow. He killed a lot of villagers. This yeah. This is a great attack. But he's got to deal with a counterattack at the same time, it looks like. That's right. Frank raiding here with his uh, horsemen at the same time. It's so scrappy, and he just elite... Uh, upgraded the elite horsemen as well so he's getting on the farms he's getting into the wood lines he's killing a lot of bills out here yeah and there's just not a lot of defense wow, either stuff happening all over <laughs> <Look> <laughs> that keep is still being attacked there's land deck there's cavalry everywhere are there some strelsky yeah we got some uh, some strelsky there coming out too um, these guys are awesome. They have the, the huge axe which they rest their gun on as they're firing. <laughs> I love that. And uh, the static deployment where, as you said, if they stand still, they'll increase their attack speed and damage three times over their uh, duration that they're stood still for. Mm -hmm. But it looks like uh, he's, he's too busy running around raiding the base, so he's, he's not going to get that bonus anymore. He's going to just focus on trying to kill as many villagers as possible. But at the same time, there's a lot of rams in his base. Oh, and there's more. <laughs> there's, oh, there's more. My goodness, you can keep adding them in. And uh, I think Mark's just fed up of all these keeps. He wants to tear them down. <laughs> and uh, he's really got a large army in here. And Frank, it's almost like he, he doesn't want to respond to that. He's doing good damage inside of Mark's base, but surely he needs to respond to these, uh, these rams soon. Yeah, the Strelsky do quite well. Um, they have guns. The guns do a lot of damage. Oh, he's got a bombard oh, in the back. Do you see that? Oh, it just killed one of the rams. So he, he actually has a pretty good defense, and he's using these buildings really effectively. So normally the cavalry would be countering the Strelsky because they're light, they're light armor. So you're, you're dealing double damage as a horseman to archers and anything light armor. Um, but when they're all sort of protected around the archery ranges and the buildings and stuff like that you're not getting any surface area so they're doing they did huge damage and now they're able to sort of sneak through the buildings and get onto the rams and take the rams out so this was amazing defense by frank with very very few units right it was very impressive yeah the the strelts are actually really good at killing rams and the rams are a feudal age siege unit right so mm -hmm. you can make them in the feudal age on the field with the siege engineering tag from the blacksmith and at this stage of the game, when your opponent's got these Streltsy out, you really need to try and attack from range, uh, bombards, trebuchets, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. uh, to try and defend your siege from those Streltsy, which are very, very powerful. So now, 
Now uh, it looks like both both players have kind of defended their bases, right? They're kind of yeah. kind of cleared up, but I think there've been pretty heavy casualties, right? Yeah, if we look at Frank right now, he's 103 villagers. Mark, on the other hand, he's got down to 49. Oh, oh no! Devastating. So the raids from Frank doing huge damage, and I think Mark wishes he maybe walled up a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, maybe and, built like eight yeah. feet, perhaps. <laughs> So uh, Frank doing some great e economic damage there, yet Mark still seems to have the, the map control for now, but Frank just building up his Streltsy, and, and that's going to get dangerous for Mark, as uh, Mark still uh, doesn't quite have those elite upgrades. He's not even in the Imperial Age at this stage. Looking around his base, we can't see the Imperial Age landmark anywhere. Yep. Yep, still just veteran. Yeah. No, no elite units yet. And, and again, he, he used that positioning really well, the Strelsky, he kind of wedged him in between that archery range and that wall there. So some cavalry ran in to engage and then realized they couldn't and then ran out. And so anytime in cavalry you're running in and running out without attacking against range units, yeah. you're, just, you're just losing a lot of... Taking free damage, yeah. basically, yeah. So uh, Mark now, yeah, he, he took heavy losses there on the front. The, the Strelsky, really a powerhouse, and uh, he's on the retreat. He has actually added a trebuchet. But I think it's a little late. The push from Mark has come to an end, mm -hmm, and now it's mm -hmm. the well. Frank is just using his superior firepower at this stage. Um, Mark, yeah, Imperial Age would be great for him, but uh, <laughs> but uh, he has two hundred food, so <laughs> <laughs> looking like that's not going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, he's in a little trouble, and uh, Frank, yeah, just sort of higher age, better technology, superior firepower at the moment. And uh, Mark just kind of has to fall back and uh, defend from these elite horsemen, which are starting to raid over on this left-hand side as well. And ooh, villagers! That could be um, quite a few kills if he wants to take the fight. But Frank's happy to run away for now. Yeah, he know he knows he has an edge. He doesn't need to sacrifice any of his units right now, right? He's just yeah. trying to get into position. And you can see the Strelsky, they are quite a bit slower than the horsemen, right? So it's taking a while to march them across the map, but if he can get them and get them in a good position, they can build up their damage bonus, right? Yeah, and oh, the mangonel could be huge. If the mangonel can get a big shot here, it could do some really good damage to the Streltsy, but the horseman from Frank diving in, and oh, oh the repair, the look at that, look at that. He's actually repairing the mangonel with villagers in here. Gosh, it's just, look at its health, it's just going down and then going up, going down. Oh, he finally <laughs> finished it off, he finally finished it off. He got it, he got it. And uh, he's backing up himself, he's got Spombard moving out, he's got his army together in the middle of the map, and he's even got a warrior monk in there as well. So uh, if he can get that off and get the bonus armor and damage, uh, as well as the static deployment, he can just kind of layer those bonuses together and uh, make a big push. But for now, um, Mark, he's... Really got a sizable army. Yeah, that's quite an impressive force he's got, because we know he lost a lot of villagers. And yeah. This is not cheap to build all those units. A lot of horses. But he is an age down. He's an age three horses mm -hmm. against the Streltsy here. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to come ahead and take the fight. There's some spearmen trying to get in at the back onto the cab. The Streltsy the also had... Oh, was looks that a good shot? It looks pretty good. He, oh, he, this could be a big one. Uh, oh, oh he, he got out. He got out. <laughs> But this is great, look at the horsemen, they're making a, a wedge between the wood lines, and the Streltsy are just laying into them from the back as uh, he dodges the mangonel shots here, this is fantastic from uh, Yeah, from great Frank. micro and great battle positioning too, yeah, having that line just protecting his troops with the knights, and now he's actually using the spread formation it looks like, so that he's not clumped up taking all that AoE damage from the mangonel. That was a great fight for Frank, and that will convert into a game win for him as well. Woo! Wow. Well played. Um, Epic match. That fantastic. was back and forth. That was scrappy. There was yeah. non-stop action around mm. the map all over the place. Wow. And uh, I think Frank, yeah, just with the superior attack advantage, Mark not having any final layers of defense, no keeps, no walls at the end there, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. couldn't hold on any longer. So that's it from us at Relic Entertainment. Thank you for joining us to watch this first exclusive gameplay. We'll have more for you in the future, but until then, make sure to sign up as an Age Insider and join us for our technical stress test. We look forward to seeing you on the battlefield in Age of Empires 4.